Welcome back to part four of restoring the Fairbanks power hammer. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace, online website building platform that means in just a few minutes you can have your own website and you can be selling stuff. Go to squarespace.com forward slash forge to get a free trial and use code forge at checkout to get 10% off. Let's jump into the video. In the last episode, we got the crank and drive wheel up on the hammer. I had to make a custom tap and a new screw. And now Will is going to get to work freeing the dies and the sow block from the anvil, because Will's going to be making new dies with Jason at Fireball Tool. The dies and sow block are held on with tapered dovetails and keys. This means, after decades of standing still, they can be quite a trouble to get unstuck. Uh-oh, that's just not moving. Oh, why don't we cut it off and then use the impact driver? Brrr. All right, we're going to weld a larger thread on there. Okay, we got oxygen in. It's now time to start heating up this entire chunk of steel. It can't be stuck if it's a liquid, am I right, guys? No, I've been having a lot of fun with that, have you, Will? I think if we hammer on it from the other side, that might be one of the best next options. It's going! Nice! Yes! Look at that! We got it loose! Ah. Come on! Ah Look at that crusty, crusty key. <laughs> oh no! What did they do to your sow block? Oh, yuck. The area where the sow block was sitting has a lifetime of dirt and grime that we need to clear out to make sure we have a clean fit when we're done. And there we go, that's two finished toggle links. Before we install the bronze bushing bearing, why don't we tell you a little bit about bronze bushing bearings? For a material to work as a bearing, it needs to possess certain physical and chemical characteristics. It needs to be fatigue resistant. It wants embeddability, which is the ability of the bearing lining to absorb or embed within itself dirt particles so it doesn't scratch the shaft. It wants compatibility, conformability. Interestingly, I never knew this. It wants high thermal conductivity so that if it gets hot, it's carrying away the heat from the spinning area. It wants corrosion resistance and it needs strength to handle the load capacity placed upon it. A bronze bearing like this is able to withstand three to four thousand pounds per square inch of force at a maximum operating temperature of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. As we said in the previous episode, this is going to have an interference fit with our toggle links. That means this bronze has a diameter larger than the hole it's going in. 
we're going to heat up the whole piece. It in turn is going to expand. It is going to allow the bronze to go in. The bronze bushing will be held captive and the key to how this works is with a film of oil. And so we're going to also need to drill oil holes and make oil grooves so Will can keep this nicely oiled because this bronze bearing only works when it's well oiled. One sleeve bearing, two sleeve bearings. <laughs> how cool is that? You see how easy these bushings go in there? That's amazing! Now that we've got oxygen again, I'm heating up the crosshead to bend it back open. And while it's cooling down, we're going to take the toggle links that Alec made and trim down these bronze bushings so that they sit flush with the tops of the links. So what we're doing now, we're going to drill a couple holes in the tops of these toggle links so we have a place to put oil in. So we've got our oil holes drilled, but now the oil can get in there, it needs a place to sit inside. So we're gonna take the die grinder in the grinding room and carve some oil grooves, which act as a kind of a tiny reservoir inside the bearing to lubricate the shaft as it spins around. So we're just gonna take a die grinder bit, and carve ourselves some swoop de doop de whoop -de in there for oil to sit in. Let's get this screw out, see if we bent the crosshead to the right size. Now I'm no expert, but I think that's bad. Alright, Will told me about this snapped bolt. I'm gonna see if I can help him out and get it out. Yowza, that's bad. Well, worst case scenario, we just have to make an entire crosshead from scratch. That would be terrible. That would be utterly terrible to have to make this from scratch. We could do it, but it's another week's worth of work. I have never in my life seen a screw as stuck as this. Well, I've got to say, you can certainly cut an accurate thread. I mean, it's like bang on. I think you cut that thread so good it's an interference fit. Could we torch it out? Uh, we could also just drill it out. As soon as we drill it, we remove the structure from the middle. We can then cave in the rest around it. Might be worth a try. What stopped me from drilling it out sooner? I've never seen any stuck screws as stubborn as this. This is utter insanity. It's so stuck. I've drilled a hole the entire way through the screw. Don't look at me like I know what I'm doing, Isaiah. I have no idea what the next step is. Welcome to season three of Screw Extractors. We've been on this desert island for 45 days and there's still no sign of a loose screw. Right, so here's my idea for how we're gonna get this out. It's a good one, I got no idea. <laughs> Uh, Will just gave me a good idea. We could maybe jam something in this hole, and then once jammed, twist. No! No! It was so close! 
We got it moving like an eighth of a turn. Oh, it's so close! Oh! Yes! Oh, it's so close! Come on! Yes! Yes! Here's your handiwork from yesterday. I'm really good at it, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like our new bolt is working, and that's good. It's very good. All right, guys, it actually works. Uh, the bolt isn't fused in there. It actually clamps down on the pitman. It's all working good. We can now put this on the hammer. Now that we've got the crosshead firmly attached to the pitman, we're gonna go ahead and give it a little test fit. We're gonna put the old arms on and then the new toggle links and maybe even the ram just to see how we're doing. If we need to remove material off of the washer up here, if we do, where do we need to remove it? We're also gonna be able to test to see what we need to do to the spring, if we need to find a new spring, if we need to make a spring, or if the one that we have is good. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing slapped together. folks dry fit up minus some completed components and it's looking like a power hammer so part of getting this all put together is to see if there is any material that needs to get taken off in any places because it doesn't line up exactly so what I think we need to do is take some material off of the back of this washer here I oversized it a little bit and we can see that as we raise the ram it moves forward. So. Oh yeah, it picks it up and pushes it out. Gotcha. So I think when we remove material off the back there. And that'll bring this further back so it's not picking it up at that angle, but it's picking it up straight. Exactly. Now that we figured out what we need to work on in the actual hammer itself, it's time for me to take a quick trip to visit our good friend Jason at Fireball Tools. Hang tight for part five wherein we're gonna make these absolutely massive chips while the dies shape up nicely. You do not wanna miss this, so subscribe, and as ever, thanks to our sponsor for allowing us to make this happen. Today's episode has been sponsored by Squarespace, and if you watched one of my most recent videos where I gave myself 12 hours to make $1,000 worth of stuff, you'll be familiar with this, the Steelhook website. And I wanna show you some of the analytics within it. Because this is one of the amazing things about Squarespace, is you get to learn some incredible insights about your business. So what you'd be able to learn is, well, on the 27th of September, we had a really good day. And if this was a business where you had sales coming in all day, you'd be able to see how your marketing efforts were performing based on the revenue coming in. You can see your units sold. You can see your conversion rate. You can see your average order value. The Squarespace analytics also allow you to see from which countries people are browsing your store from, unless they're using a VPN. You get data on the traffic sources to your website. So we see when I promoted the website on my Instagram, we had 5,000 people coming. But when I published the video, we had 10,000 people coming to the website. 9,600 of them searching for it directly. What's also incredibly important with your website if you're wanting to sell products is actually being able to ship the products. The old school way of shipping your orders is you simply hand write out the name and address of the person you're shipping to. But with Squarespace, it's way more powerful. You can come in here and export a CSV and then you've got an Excel spreadsheet of all the orders you need to fulfill. Or you can use Squarespace's powerful integrations with companies like ShipStation 
That's our Squarespace website integrated into ShipStation. We print the labels on one of these. And that is why it's so beneficial to invest your time and effort into building a Squarespace website, because then you get all these powerful integrations. Squarespace is constantly improving their offering. You'll get 24 seven customer support. There's no plugins, patches, fixes, upgrades ever. And so go to squarespace.com forward slash forge to get a free trial. When you use code forge at checkout, you'll get 10% off your first purchase with them. Thank you, Squarespace. Thank you all for watching. There's one final, final thing. October 16th, which is today or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video, Steel Grinders are back in stock, 12 p.m. Mountain Time. Be at alexdealshop.com then. Thank you guys so much.